هذا هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ولنتهلل به المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور Christos on esti epne kron thanaton, thanaton batisas, keti sentith ni masi zoif karis amenos. No time and date stamp, but uh, church is started. This is the uh, Pascha or Easter service. So in a few minutes they'll come down and uh, I'll show you what happens next. All right. I can't right now, I did the volume. Here's, here's the camera, here's the past the camera, Sadie's camera. Oh! 
Ευχαριστεί το Θεό και δεσκορπιστεί το σαν η εχθροί αυτού και φυγέτου σαν από προσώπου αυτού. Η μισούν τεσσαρών στο predicting what segment this is because well that was a huge failure <laughs> so uh anyways uh let me say Christos Anesti it is now after Pascha and you will notice a difference and a change in the opening theme when you're watching these videos so uh, let me give you the time and date stamp it is 16 hours and 56 minutes into the day of Monday, April 21st, 2014. That's right. We're coming up on, on the end of the month. Uh, it's been, uh, the weekend has been, has been, been fantastic. As I said, we go from fast to feast. Or from my perspective, because it's simply a change in menu, you go from feast to feast. 
<laughs> you have a feast before, uh, or 50 days before, and you have a feast for 50 days afterwards. So this is the beginning of the 50-day uh, uh, feast after uh, Pascha. And we call Pascha Easter, that's the way it's properly known as, it's no, and it's basically Passover. Um, that's the loose translation between uh, 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 the words. So it's, Pascha is Passover. Uh, the Italians would know it uh, if they know the, the name Pasquale. Well, Pasquale comes from Pascha. This is the origin of the name, and it's, the name is celebrated. That day is celebrated. The, the person celebrates the name, celebrates the day of their name on Pascha, on Easter. Uh, or what's, so what's commonly known as Easter. Uh, so. We have the traditional Greek uh, Greek Pascha. That means lots of food, uh, family, friends, you know, stuff like that. And it was really, it was really good. I really enjoy myself. Um, the part, one of the parts that I do enjoy, but a lot of people don't necessarily enjoy it as much as I do. But uh, uh, in church, that's where you get to do a lot of. You, you, I get to practice a lot of my Greek. So I've got. You know, in terms of the amount of Greek that I, I worked on this week, it was a significant amount. Normally, I just do about an hour's worth of Greek every day. Well, during the services, because I was able to uh, get to the point where I can um, recognize groupings of letters, recognize the, the phon phonetics, uh, I was able to use the services to pra practice my phonetics. In other words, it became... In addition to my studies, even though I was in church, even though I was, you know, listening to the ancient music, you know, it became part of my study. So uh, this gave me uh, two, three hours, and some of the services, particularly the liturgies, uh, can go up to four hours in length. So you get a good chunk of studying in. Uh, so that's what really sort of uh, made me happy is that yeah, I was in church, and it, it's, 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 a, it's, 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 it's I guess it's something that um, is different for each person. Because I also view it as part of my job, I do my academic work there and I do a lot of uh, the work that I need to sort of pay my bills is connected to everything here. It's connected, that's part of, part of uh, how I get my my my, uh, my funds that uh, it's actually enjoyable it's it, it, you know instead of working at an office nine to five it's you know you listen to the service you listen to the chants you 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 you're studying the history you're learning the history of the language you're learning how things evolve um, and then beyond that there is the spiritual understanding there is the um, the eastern part of this, and this is what, what, what needs to be understood, is that, uh, and it's not understood in the West, things are more than simply conceptual. It's not simply about the idea. It's actually about the experience and learning from the experience. The experience can be as much as any textbook, informative. So in other words, the experience becomes the textbook. Now this isn't the... Uh, the uh, lovey dovey uh, hippie uh, uh, nihilist view of ah I study at I study at the University of Life. This is not that at all. Uh, this is uh, a higher awareness of what most people could see would consider everyday experiences. So if you're in an everyday experience and you start seeing and experiencing a higher uh, awareness, I know a, a, a greater knowledge, then the environment becomes the textbook. In other words, it starts teaching the things that you didn't already know. And this is how you can sort of look at if we meet new people. New people, whether you agree with their stories or not, whether you agree with their points of view or not, provide other points of view and experiences that you don't have. So even if you don't agree with what they're saying, 
if you can begin to understand where they're coming from, in other words, work through your feelings, work through your, if, 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 if what they're saying offends you, work through that feeling of offense. Bring it down to a, a, a small level. And they, you're not going to accept what they're going to say, but you're simply listening to what they're saying and, and try to understand how they came to their particular position they came to. Why are they seeing what they're seeing? Why are they saying what they're saying? And in this, as you begin to work through this, and this is a, a practice that something has to be done on a regular basis, and it's not always going to be successful, uh, but as you do this more and more, you begin to now, begin to now, every time you meet a person, you begin to add these people's experiences, your meaning, your, your, their, uh, your, your interaction with them, into your experiences. In other words, your library... Right, because these people are your books, your textbooks, this is, uh, your experiences. Their experiences are your stories. As your library grows, what you know grows. You know, in other words, you begin to understand human beings. You begin to understand experience in a whole new manner. Then you can go from there, and once you say you've got the university that 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 experience that you use the world as an experience as a textbook, you can now turn the thing around. You can go into a textbook or go into any book that's written and understand that the person who wrote this book is writing from experience. In other words, most authors will write from their own personal experience. If you could understand this, then, that's the, this is the third level you're getting into here, then you now can now look at all books as written forms of experience. So now you're going beyond the story into the experience that was that was that formulated the story. And this begin gives you a whole new level, of, a whole new level of understanding. And again, you start from the bottom, <laughs> and you work your way up. So the first is, is you want to see how experience can teach you, how experience can become your textbook, how experience become your books, and you build your library based on that. Then, once you've gotten to a good point where you're really comfortable with this, you can now go into books and see, okay, well. What experiences do I find in books? How do I take the, 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 what, the written word and see it as experience? And, you know, sort of turning it around, using your experience with people as books to be, have books become experiences of, of people. Anyways, our time is up. I will uh, talk to you in the next segment. And, yeah, take it easy. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, it's time for another segment of the BTS vlog. Okay, got the timer started. Time to give you the date, time and date stamp. It is 16 hours and 45 minutes into the day of Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014. And so far, at a minimum, on average, <laughs> you know, not a full hundred percent, but uh, close to it, like, like between ninety-five percent and and ninety-five percent, ninety-nine percent. I've been able to vlog on a daily basis. I'm slow at uploading, editing, and uploading, but <laughs> the vlogging's been 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 being done. So that's a good thing, yay! And also, before I forget, Jesus and uh That's Happy Easter for those uh, who don't know Greek. Uh, and we use the term Pascha uh, rather than Easter because Pascha translates to Passover and this is the New Testament Passover. This is the Passover between the Old Testament and the New Testament. So, yay for that. Um, uh, a fair chunk of work is being done here. Uh, I did start some new projects yesterday and I got a good way through them. I'm rearranging the uh, the the place where the editing bay the the first editing bay was. I'm reorganizing it uh, to uh, add some more functionality into it. I'm actually putting IPTV into that that space there. Uh, the old what's happening now is the old cable system is coming down. The cable's being removed, and as that uh, space becomes available, it's being repurposed and reused. So, as I said. We, you don't simply uh, use space once. 
when the space becomes available, it's repurposed. But these projects, t the taking down and porting up, do take time. So it, it, there's a transition period between one and the other. And these transition periods do take, uh, can, can t occur over months can, can, and sometimes can occur over years. And uh, they do take a fair chunk of work. This is the, 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 you know, the, the, the warehouse project, the work pro um, machine shop warehouse, that's an ongoing project. That, that sometimes things stall because uh, like right now the machine shop warehouse project is stalled. Because I need to get up into the ceiling up to where the, where, where the shelving is. There's high, higher, higher shelving. There's shelving and storage space higher up. But I haven't been able to get up there to organize that space. So <laughs> you know, uh, that's sort of where there's a bit of a uh, slow or a halting of that particular project. So. But the thing is, there's also more now. There, there, there's more projects coming onto the electronics bench. Uh, so bit by bit, chunk by chunk, everything will get done. It's just a matter of uh, how I manage my time, and I do have to work on today to see if I can manage my time a little bit better. The goal is also to work on the shows and develop that are in, or I should say, already in season one. That's um, that's the. Uh, um, Beauty and the Geek and Ubuntu BSD Unix and Tile definitely work on, worked on uh, today as well. I should get some more of the graphics done for that because the graphics need to be updated a little bit, so that has to be done. Um, the a lot of the uh, the uh, uh, sourcing and research work is already being done on Beauty and the Geek. Uh, you can sort of follow me around with that. You see a heading more towards Hirajuku now so it's the Beauty Geek is going to be a Hirajuku Japanese centered uh, 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 beauty show it's going to be in, in that direction simply because uh, with Hirajuku you can rather than focusing on on fashion you focus on style style becomes the fashion and that's kind of how I want to uh, approach things I want to have things be with style as opposed to fashion, and that means uh, using my style as the core, and then building from there on out. So, <laughs> and the, but that also means working on the uh, the closet more. You know, doing more work on the closet. But I think as as um, this cable project now taking down the old cable system, the old TV system, is that as that's taken down, uh, this will be allow me more more room to work uh, in clear up some of the stuff that it has to be done uh, in order to clear out the closet more uh, because a, a, spa, a space has to be made uh, in the current storage area up in front uh, the front storage area has to be cleaned up so that the cabinet the filing cabinet can be moved there so and that's going to be a bit of a work because the hard the hard part of, of the uh, of moving the cabinet and it's, it's all being done all by myself is I have to find a way to get it up on the trolley. There's a trolley that you pull, you know, you know, that's on wheels, and you can push and pull it anywhere you want to go to. But the problem is, is you have to get it up onto the trolley, and that's going to take a bit of doing. Uh, there's a bit of negotiation that has to be done there, and enough space has to be made so that the trolley can fit through and eventually turn around. So that's going to be a, a bit of a challenge. But you know, you know, these things, these things will be taken care of as they need, as they're needed. Uh, uh, and so it will move forward. It just may take a bit of time. <sighs> and we'll see how things go. So it's you know, and the thing is that the research I found the research desk is actually working better. It's now improving more. There's more uh, upgrades to the research desk going on. And, it's, and the funny thing is that the research desk. Uh, I look back and see how long ago, because it seemed like a long time ago that when I began this latest version of the research, re, the research desk. Uh, and it wasn't that long ago. It was actually just, uh, it was, uh, I began working on it in September, October. I finished by November, December. And here we are into uh, April, May. And we're talking about uh, a second, already a second version of uh, 
the research desk. So that's what's happening now. We're working on the second the second version of the research desk. It is an expanded capacity. This is this is the, the version. We have a major upgrade, and then from the from the major upgrade, you go through uh, 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 capacity expansion. You try to expand what the desk can do. What the, you know, what its capacity is, and that's what, sort of what's happening now. The capacity of, of the research desk is being expanded, and uh, that product is also moving along very. You know, I would say I, I'm, I'm saying very well because. It's making progress. You know, you've got to be sometimes you have to be realistic about certain things, particularly if you're doing a lot on your own. You're not going to get everything you want to get done. It's if you can get uh, the the basic goal goal you're looking for in in terms of success is are you moving forward? If you're moving forward, then you can say yay, you've got good progress. You know, but if you're not moving forward, even if you're just sort of in the right direction, that's good too. The issue where you have to really work is if you're in the wrong direction, you're facing the wrong direction, or you're going in the wrong direction. That's where you really have to stop and uh, think about things a little bit more. Anyways, uh, our time is up. I will see you. It looks like there's going to be some more vlogging today. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm not really too sure how things are going to get done. So, anyways, <laughs> see ya. Time for another segment of the BTS vlog. It's time to vlog again, and we're out for a walk. So, see, it's about 6:30. It's Wednesday. I don't know what date it is, so that's <laughs> that's an issue. Uh, there's a bit of a wind out, so uh, the question is whether or not uh, it's going to interfere with the filming or not, or the vlogging. Uh, so what we'll definitely do is we'll definitely do as we can. We'll do the um, we'll do the uh, shopping and vlogging. We're gonna have to sort of see how this ends up working out in terms of the wind. Uh, sometimes it's it. it <laughs> It's there and sometimes it's not. And I don't know whether or not I can actually talk over the wind. So that's gonna that's sort of the thing that has to be kind of worked out. And it'll be worked out bit by bit as we move along. Anyways, I gotta get my body used to the exercise, used to walking, so that's why I'm kind of out of breath now. And once my body warms up, then we'll continue our discussion. Okay, we're recording, no beep or anything like that. So, anyways, I do have a date stamp now. It's uh, April 23rd. That's right, it's uh, Wednesday, April 23rd. And we're getting into the evening now. We're getting the evening hours. Let's see here. What time is it? Just about 19, hour, 19 hours and 30 minutes into the day of uh, Wednesday, April 23rd. 2014. That's our time and date stamp. <laughs> uh, I had to look at the receipt to sort of uh, figure that out. Anyways, uh, I said, uh, well, I was coming. My body wasn't. Uh, f well, here's the wind again. When I was coming, I wasn't fully up to vlogging. Uh, my body hadn't adjusted to the walking yet. So I was getting winded very easily. Now it's not so bad, so I can talk. Uh, we do have people coming up, so we're gonna have, have a bit of science when we we'll do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's kind of uh, the things that go on when you vlog in public. Anyways, when we get when we come back in a few minutes, uh, I will talk about the Peripatetic Society and uh, Eastern and Greek philosophy. All right, so as I said, uh, we're vlogging again, and uh, we're gonna do our usual uh, shopping and philosophy bit. 
And that has to do with uh, the peripatetics. Uh, the peripatetics uh, were uh, essentially a group of Eastern uh, of Greek philosophers. And Greek philosophy, as I said, was very different from the Western point of view in that it was done formally stodgy in the classroom and <laughs> that's the way it was. It wasn't that way at all. And the peripatetics kind of proved this. Uh, the peripatetics were philosophers who walked and talked. They had these discussions as they were walking, just the way we're doing now. And this is how they began to develop their philosophy. They, they, they developed their ideas. And uh, we're kind of doing the same thing here. So it's not uncommon or necessarily unusual in history anyways uh, to talk about philosophy as you're walking or doing some shopping, as you're doing some sort of so-called mundane things. It's the unusual part in history that philosophers sit there in a stodgy classroom and, well, do their business. <laughs> uh, that's the Western way of thinking. The Western way of thinking is uh, totally thought, is concept only, is completely divorced from reality and experience. Where Eastern philosophy, and now we have to be careful crossing the street, Eastern philosophy is very much connected with experience. As a matter of fact, what you're looking for in Eastern philosophy is what's come known, in, in this, unfortunately, in the New Age term as holistic, where is mind, body, and soul. In other words, the whole of you experiences the philosophy, not just the conceptual parts. And this, unfortunately, has been lost in the West, but uh, hopefully we can bring it back again. Because <laughs> a lot of people do have, seem to have some degree of interest in this, so anyways, uh, I got to cross, there's a lot of people here, I'll talk to you in a bit. Democratic Earth. Earth.